Okay, so um, does anyone want to tell me what we can combine for number two? Combining um, 7B with 2 and then 3B with 2. Yep, very good. And what else, Dakota? Um, then you can do um, 1 and the 8. Exactly. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And there's nothing we can combine with the negative 5e. Good. So then we have negative 7b squared and positive 3b squared. So what does that combine to? Um, it would be a 10b to 4 squared. Even if we have if the 7 oh. is negative and the 3 is positive? Oh, sorry. Um, then no, it would be... Um, it used to be negative, right? Yep, it's going to be negative, and seven beats three by how many? Um, by four. Yep, so negative four v squared, and then we have nothing to combine with our negative five v, so we'll put that next. So we go from highest to lowest power, and then one plus eight. It's nine. Yep. And that's as far as you can get. Very good. Thank you so much, Dakota. Very good. Okay, so our answer choice is negative 4v squared minus 5v plus 9. Okay, number three, we are adding these polynomials. So we have 3 minus 5n squared plus 3n plus 3. Can I get another volunteer to do number three? What can we combine? No volunteers? Can I answer it again? Let's let someone else. I appreciate it. But OK, I'm going to have to pick on people. Savannah Gill, can you help me out on this one? Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's OK. What can we combine? Um. Well. <laughs> Just give me one second. I'm just trying to like look at it. Okay. There's only one thing that are like terms. I'll give you that hint. So what are the two things we can combine? Um, well, it looks like the three on each one of the sides of the parentheses on each part. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those are our only like terms. So before we combine the threes, though, let's go from the highest power. So the highest power would be this negative 5n squared, and then our 3n, and then we can combine 3 and 3, which is 6. Thank you, Savannah. So it would be this answer choice, negative 5n squared plus 3n plus 6. Oh, I did, um, I did number four. Sorry, that was number four. Let's go back to number three. Real quick, wh wh where could I um find this? What is that? Yes. This is on Canvas. It is under week 10, the unit eight test. Okay, sorry, accidentally skipped number three. So let's see, um, Amari, what can we combine for number three? And the negative two n squared and the negative five n squared. Yep. And what else? And you can combine the negative four and the positive three. Very good. So what do our our rectangles combine to? Our negative two n squared and negative five n squared. Don't the negatives turn positive? That's if we're multiplying. So we're adding them. So, so if we're adding two negatives, our answer is still going to be a negative. 
And then what's two and five? Negative seven. Yep. So we have negative seven n squared. And then if we have negative four and we add three. Isn't that turn into uh, negative one? Yep. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, Omari. So negative seven n squared minus one. Okay, number five. We have four n squared plus n minus negative two n minus seven n squared. So can someone tell me when we have a negative in front of this parentheses, what happens to all the signs inside? You can send it to me in the chat or you can tell me. There's something we wanna do before we start boxing and circling our like terms. It becomes the opposite. Yep, thank you, Bella. Yep, since we have a negative, when we multiply everything by a negative, it just changes the sign. So our negative 2n is now a positive 2n and our negative 7n squared is now a positive 7n squared. And then we just bring down what we had, 4n squared plus n plus 2n plus 7n squared. Bella, since you got us started, would you mind finishing it? What, what can I combine? Maybe not. Okay, let's see. Tiana, can you help me out? Oh, she's typing it. 4n squared and 7n squared. Yep, very good. Thank you, Bella. And n and 2n, right. Okay, so then if we have 4n squares and we add 7, then we have 11. And then if we have 1n and we add that with 2n's, then there are 3n's all together. So 11n squared plus 3n for number five. Thank you, Bella. All right, number six, we are subtracting again. So we have 5x squared minus two minus negative eight plus x squared. Um, let's see. Jaden, can you help me out on this one? What do I need to do first? Jaden, are you there? Okay, he must have stepped away. How about Kaleni? Can you help me out on this one? What do I need to do first? You need to add, well not add, subtract the like terms. Okay. And before we do that, we kind of want to do what we did in number five, right? Since there's a negative in front of the parentheses, our negative eight is first going to become positive eight. And then our positive x squared is going to become negative x squared. And then we want to do exactly what you're saying. So now what? Can I combine? Go ahead, Kalini. What were you going to say we can combine? Oh, I'm breaking up. Can you guys hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Kalani said I was breaking up. So I'll just go ahead and finish it then. So we have 5x squared, and then we have negative x squared. So if we take away an x squared from 5x squared, then we're left with 4x squared. And then we have negative two and positive eight. So if we have eight and we take away two, we're left with positive six. So four X squared plus six, or number six. 
Okay, so that's it for adding and subtracting. Now we're gonna move on to number seven, which is multiplying. So we have to multiply 5x squared times 2x plus two. Can I get a volunteer to tell me how we would find the product of this, how we multiply? What did you do? Um, do was in the, um, the parentheses first? Or so would you find, would you find the same, like, um, the same, um, what's it called? Well, like, are the same numbers? You mean like terms? Yes. Okay. So there, we, yes, you, we could. However, we have an X squared here, and then we have an X, and then we have a two. So are any, are there any like terms? No. Okay. There's no like terms, but yeah, that's always a good place to start. So if there's no like terms, then we just now need to multiply, right? So yes. how am I going to multiply 5x squared times 2x plus 2? Um, do the, um, let's do um, 2x times, uh, 2x plus 2x, and then do the um, 5x squared 2 times 4. Oh, we can't combine those. Oh, okay. So we want to just multiply 5x squared times 2x. So 5 times 2 is 10. We have x squared times another x. So that's three X's being multiplied. Yeah. And then five X squared times two, which is five times two is 10. And then we also have an X squared. So that one would be 10 X cubed plus 10 X squared. Oh, and I skipped again. And sorry. There's no x squared on here. I made that up. It was just 5x. Let's do that one over again. Sorry about that. 5x times 2x plus 2. I don't know why I decided to make it squared. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. x times x is x squared. And then 5x times 2 is just 10x. And that's not number 7. I skipped to number 8 again. <laughs> Thanks, Cheyenne. Sorry, I didn't see your message. Okay, let's go back to number seven. So we have two times 6k plus seven. So we're going to multiply. So we want to just distribute the two to everything in the parentheses. So two times 6k and two times seven. Can someone send me over what they got in the chat when they multiplied those? Or you can tell me. Yep, 12K plus 14. Very good, Cheyenne. Two times 6K is 12K, and two times seven is 14. Excellent. Okay, and then we've got two more. So let's look at number nine and 10. So we have 6n plus 1 times n plus 5. So this is where we need to use our boxes, so our area model. So since we're multiplying two things by two more things, we need a 2 by 2 box. So we could put our 6n plus 1 here and our n plus 5 here. Okay, go ahead and try this one. And then I'm going to, I'll take a volunteer or I'll pick someone to tell me what you guys got. So remember, you're finding the area of each box. So you're multiplying. For the first box, we would multiply 6n times n, because the area of this box is 6n squared. So find the area of each box.
Okay, thanks, Savannah. So what did you get for this box? Um, I got 30, uh, well, I, I uh, in total, I got 31 N in total. Okay. So, and that's because we have 30 N here and then one times N here, yep. Yes. yes. And then what did you get? Five times mm -hmm. one, which five. is five, good. And then the total answer is the six N squared to uh, plus 31 N plus five. Excellent. Thank you, Savannah. Any questions on number nine? Okay, let's do the last one, number 10. We have five P minus four times three P minus one. So go ahead and follow the same steps that we just did it on number nine. So we have five P minus four, three P minus one. So then go ahead and find the area of each box and then combine the like terms. If you have any questions too, you can send it over in the chat. And I know we had someone that just joined us. So we are on um, the unit eight test in Canvas. So it's on there, it's multiple choice. We're just finishing that up though. So we're gonna be moving on to the polynomial house project here in just a second. Do I have a volunteer that wants to tell me how they did number 10? Any volunteers? Okay, I'll just do it. So 5p times 3p is 15p squared. Then we have to multiply 5p times negative one, which is negative 5p. And then we have to multiply negative four times 3p, which is negative 12p. And negative four times negative one, which is positive four. And then we can combine our p's. So our answer will be 15p squared, negative 12p minus 5p is negative 17p, and then plus four. Okay, so that's it for part one. Yes, let's, I forgot, you guys are right. We need to do part two also. So let's go ahead and Go ahead and submit that part one, and then we can work on part two. Okay. So a rectangle has a length of 3x plus 5 and a width of 2x plus 1. So it always helps to draw a picture. So we have a rectangle. We have a length of 3x plus 5 and a width of 2x. I'm going to write it this way. So it's 2x minus 1. So this is just exactly what we did on number 9 and 10. We just have to um, multiply the length times the width to find the area. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. And negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Circle our like terms. Then we have 6x squared. 10x minus 3x is positive 7x minus 5. So that's the area to find the perimeter of this rectangle. 
Remember, we find the perimeter by adding up all of the sides. So if this side's 2x minus 1, this side's also 2x minus 1. If this side's 3x plus 5, this side's also 3x plus 5. So now we just need to combine all the like terms. So we can combine 2x, 3x, 2x, and 3x. And we can combine negative 1, positive 5, negative 1, and positive 5. 5 plus 5 is 10, minus 1 is 9, minus another one is 8. So this is going to be a positive 8. 2x plus 3x is 5x, plus 2x is 7x, plus 3x is 10x. So the perimeter would be 10x plus 8. Excuse me, I had a question. Yes. How do we um, type in the answer if we have the um, second power? So I think this button right here, you can click. So, and don't worry about it. I'm going to be grading them. So let's see. So 6x. So little. Oh, wait, I think I was already clicked on it. 2x. Squared. So if you click this button, see how it has the little brown arrow above it? You can make it um, an exponent. Okay, thank you. That would be 6x squared. And then if you want to undo it, just click it again. Plus 7x minus 5. So there's our area. And then perimeter. And x plus 8. Okay, any questions on number one? Um, okay. Can you, can you go back to number one real quick? I wasn't done writing it. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So for number two, a rectangle has an area of x squared plus 7x plus 12. And so we want to try to find the length and the width of the rectangle. So we have to work backwards. So the 7x, we know these two boxes have to combine to 7x, but then they also have to multiply to 12. It's not showing what I'm writing. Sorry, let me close my overhead and start it again because you can't see the box I just drew. So what multiplies to give us x squared? That's x times x. So we have to figure out what multiplies to 12 but adds to 7. So what multiplies to 12? Well, that it could be 6 and 2, but does 6 and 2 add to 7? No. It could be 12 and 1, but do 12 and 1 add to 7? Nope. So 4 and 3, if we do positive 4 and positive 3, we get 3x here and 4x here, which gives us that 7x, and then which also multiplies to 12. So there's our length and there's our width. So here we'll just type x plus 3 and x plus 4. And then number three, we're going to be using that information now to find the perimeter of this rectangle. 
So it's the same one. It has the area of x squared plus 7x plus 12, which we just determined um, the sides then are x plus 3 and x plus 4, which means this side's also x plus 3 and this side is x plus 4. So now we need to find the perimeter. So we need to just add up all of these sides and then go ahead and send me what you get for the perimeter in the chat. So once you add up all those sides, what do you get? Can you go back up a little bit? Up like this? I need to see number two. I didn't get to write down um, the last one. You mean, you want to see this box, the answer box? Like that? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, so there's no, you don't have to put perimeter or anything, right? Just write that. Yeah. OK. Okay, so and so to find the perimeter, we add up all the sides and thank you, Tiana. Yes, so we add x plus x plus x plus x, which means there are four x's. And then we add three plus four plus three plus four, which is 14. So it is four x plus 14. So P, the perimeter equals 4X plus 14. And number four, Mike is trying to calculate the perimeter of his pool but is having trouble doing it correctly. Find the mistake and show him how to calculate the perimeter correctly. So he did six perimeter equals six X plus two plus 12 X minus seven plus six X plus two plus 12 X minus seven. And then he got, when he simplified, he got 40 X minus 14. Okay. so. The best thing to do on these is to just calculate the perimeter yourself, and then you can look at his work and compare it with your work to see what he did wrong. So it looks like he set up his equation correctly. So maybe he just added wrong. So there's the pool. We would add up all four sides. Which is exactly what he did. So now let's go ahead and combine our like terms. So we have 6x plus 12x plus 6x plus 12x. So 12 plus 12 is 24, plus six is 30, plus six is 36x. And then two minus seven is negative five, negative five plus two is negative three, and negative three minus seven is negative 10. So perimeter equals 36x minus 10. And then we need to, um, we'll just explain that he did not combine the like terms correctly.
And can anyone tell me specifically how he got 40x and negative 14? What could he have done? What would have given him that? So it looks like he added the twos with the X's, right? Because if he added the two and the two, then that would have given him the 40 X and then the negative seven and the negative seven would have given him the negative 14. So find the twos with the X's. They don't have an X. No, no one. Can you go back to number three real quick, please? Yep. Um, it's P equals four X plus 14. I'm going to go back down here. Let's see, maybe I can space it so it goes down. There we go. So you can see both. Okay, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, any questions on part two? Okay. Can you give us a little more time? What's that, Dakota? Can you give us a little more time? Us to writing it. Okay. Okay, so once you submit part two, then we are going to be in our workbook on the polynomial house project. So page 70. And then Dakota, let me know when you're done. And then I'll close it and we can look at our workbook bigger. Okay, I'm finished. Okay. Can you show number two? Okay. okay. Let me go back up. Number two is x plus three and x plus four. All right, so let's go ahead and open up to page 70 in your workbook. We'll work on this polynomial house project. So we have this blueprint or this floor plan of a house and it's written in terms of a polynomial. So our bedroom is 2x plus 7 by 3x plus 7, um, or sorry, the bathroom. And then the bedroom is 4x minus 1 by x plus 7. So using the information given in this um, blueprint, we need to find the perimeter and area of the rooms in the table below. So the hallway. Here we have the hallway. So to find the perimeter, perimeter, we are going to add up all the sides.
So we're going to be adding up 9x plus 8 plus 2x plus 9x plus 8 plus 2x. So make sure, even though only two of the sides are labeled, it has four sides. So we need to make sure to, to add 9x plus 8 and another 9x plus 8 and 2x and another 2x. And then we have to combine our like terms. So we have 9x plus 2x plus 9x plus 2x. So 9x's and 2x's, that's 11x plus another 11x. So all together, 22x's. And then 8 and 8, which is 16. So the perimeter of that hallway is 22x plus 16. Okay, and then the area, we need to multiply the length times the width. So the length of our hallway is 2x times the width, which is 9x plus 8. So we're multiplying a monomial by a binomial. So we can just distribute the 2x to everything in the parentheses, 2x times 9x is 18x squared and 2x times 8 is 16. Okay, any questions on how to find the perimeter and the area? Okay. So I want you guys to go ahead and find the perimeter of the bedroom and the area and then of the living room um, also find the perimeter and the area. So go ahead and complete this table on your own and then we'll check your answers. And you can send me any questions you have in the chat and I can help you.
Okay, so can someone tell me how they found the perimeter of the bedroom? Or do I have to pick people? Any volunteers? Um, I'll try. Okay, thanks, Dakota. Okay, um, you do four X, no, four, yeah, four X, subtract by one. Right, so here's and the then, bedroom. Yeah. And do it again for the other side. Or would that be a part of the, um, yeah, do it for the other side too, wouldn't you? Okay, so plus 4x minus 1? Yep. Yes. And then you do 7 plus, no, sorry, x times, no, x plus 4, plus 7, sorry. Yep. 7. Plus 7. And then do it again. Plus x plus 7. Yep, there's our four sides. Very good, Dakota. And then what did you do? Um, I did, okay, 4x, um, I did I did all the ones that had the x added, so like it was two 4x's, yep. and then the um, that red were just the plus, yeah. yes. Yep, so how many x's all together? There is um, four. Yep, and so the four plus the four plus the one plus the one was how many in total? Oh, uh, wait for x or for the actual number? Uh-huh, so 4x plus 4x plus x plus x, there would be 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, okay. plus another one, so 10, 10 x's, right? Yes, Good. and then you would do the ne negative 1. Well, would it be subtracting or negative? Yep, so negative 1, negative 1, positive 7, and positive 7. So um, it would be... Six, would it be 14? Yep, so seven plus seven is 14, and then we have to take away the, the negative one. Oh. So it would be 14 minus one would be 13 minus another 12. one would be 12. Very good. Excellent. Okay, and then what about for the area of the bedroom? How am I gonna find the area of the bedroom? No volunteers? I have to pick someone? Okay, thank you, Bella. She's telling me in the chat. Okay, so we need to multiply 4x minus one and x plus seven. So I'm just gonna set up our boxes. And we'll do 4x minus 1 and x plus 7. So we find the area of each box. So 4x squared, 4x times 7, which is 28x, negative 1 times x, which is negative x, and negative 1 times 7, which is negative 7. And then circle your like terms. So then, Bella, what was the final answer? So we have our 4x squared. We combine these. Yep, she typed it. Okay, 4x squared plus 27x minus 7. Very good. Okay, and then our living room. We're running out of time, so I'll go ahead and go over the living room. The living room, we have 2x plus 9 and x plus 7. So 2x plus 9 plus x plus 7. And then that again, because this side's also 2x plus 9, and this side is also x plus 7. So we can combine 2x plus x is 3x plus 2x is 5x plus another x is 6x's. Then we have 9 plus 7, which is 16, plus another 16, which is 32. And then we have to find the area, which are, we're going to multiply the 2x plus 9 times the x plus 7. So 
So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 7 is 14x. 9 times x is 9x. And 9 times 7 is 63. Circle our like terms. And then our answer is 2x squared. 14x plus 9x is 23x's plus 63. Okay, and then so two, three, and four, you're using the information from number one to determine these. However, one, I just noticed that a piece of information is missing. So um, X, you have to know X okay. in order to do two, three, and four. So okay. let's, say, let's say X equals two. And now if you wanna put new carpet in the bedroom, the cost of carpet is 250 per square foot plus a $100 installation fee. Determine the total cost for new carpet in the bedroom. Okay, so I'm just gonna get through number two cause I know it's 1057, we have three minutes. And then you're gonna do the same thing for number three and four pretty much. So um, we're talking about carpet in the bedroom. So are we gonna be using area or perimeter? Well, the carpet is everything inside, right? So that would mean we're gonna be using the area. And we said the area of the bedroom was 4x squared plus 27x minus seven. Well, to figure out exactly how many square feet, we're gonna to need to plug in two for x. So four, and then we're gonna say x is two plus 27, but we know what x is, x is two, minus seven. So first we need to calculate, we need to figure out how many square feet is this bedroom. So always um, do your parentheses and exponents first. Two squared is four, four times four is 16. And then 27 times two is 54 minus seven. So 54, six, 54, 64, 70 minus seven would be 63. So we're saying this is 63 squared feet, 63 square feet. So if it's 250 per square foot and there's a $100 installation fee. So the cost is equal to 250 because it's 250 per square foot times however many feet, which are, we have 63 square feet. And then there's this one time fee of $100. So there's our equation we can use. And then we'll go ahead and multiply 250 times 63 plus 100. So the total cost would be $257.50. Okay, and if you have to go, feel free. I'm gonna to try to help you guys finish three and four really quickly, at least get it started. So you wanna put new laminate flooring in the living room and hallway. So the cost of laminate is 375 per square foot plus a $200 insulation fee. Determine the total cost for new laminate flooring in the living room and the hallway. So um, laminate flooring, that's gonna be the area, right? It's not just going around the perimeter, around the outside of those rooms. So we would need to combine the areas of the living room and the hallway. So first we need to do that. So the area of the hallway is 18x squared plus 16. And then the area of the living room is 2x squared plus 23x plus 63. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We have 18x squared and 2x squared. So there's 20. And then we have plus 23x. And then we can combine 63 and 16. 63, 73, so 79. 
So we need a number in order to calculate the cost. So let's plug in. We know that x is equal to 2. So we need to plug in 2 for x and simplify. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 20 is 80. 23 times 2 is 46 plus 79. I'm going to do that on my calculator. 80 plus 46 plus 79. So that is 205 square feet. So this flooring is 375 a square foot plus a $200 installation fee. So we need to multiply that 375 times the number of square feet, which are 205. And then we need to add in that one time installation fee. So we have 375 times 205 square feet of that, and then plus our 200 installation fee, so $968.75. Okay, and number four, you will need to replace the baseboards once the new carpet and laminate is installed. So the baseboards are 30 cents per linear, linear foot and go around the perimeter of each room. So those baseboards are all, what goes around on all the walls um, up to the flooring. So determine the cost for new baseboards in the bedroom, living room, and hallway. So that means we need to add up the perimeters of all three rooms. So that's 22X plus 16 is our hallway, plus our bedroom, which is 10X plus 12, plus, our living room, which is 6x plus 32. So we got to combine our like terms. So 22x plus 10x is 32 plus 6x. There's 38 of those x's. And then we have 32 plus 12, which is 44, plus 16, which is 60. And then we have to plug in x equals two. So 38 times two is 76 plus 60. So one Can you move it down a little bit? Okay, so um, it's 30 cents per linear foot. So the cost is just that 136 um, feet times 30 cents per foot, which is $40 and 80 cents. So you just multiply 136 times 0.3 on your calculator. And yeah. like, you get you said those are 30 cents each, right? Yep. So when you put a zero at the end of three, or is that just a percent? Oh yeah, you can. It's yes. Sorry, I know it was a little rushed, but I know you guys wanted to get through this assignment. So any questions? Okay, so then that wraps up the live session. I have some of you are staying on for the unit eight um, missing assignment session that we're gonna do right now from 11 to 12. So if you got the email from me with the invite or you to your teacher, go ahead and stay on and we'll get started on those unit eight missing assignments.
So let's see. I think that is Cheyenne. Are you able to stay on Cheyenne and Esmeralda? And I think Melanie and Savannah Contreras. Okay, great. I'm gonna leave now. Okay. Yep, I don't believe you were on the list, Alex. So you're good to go. Okay, so we were gonna start at the beginning of unit eight. Give me just a second. Hold on. Let me switch over. I know you guys have been sitting here for a minute. So if you want to stand up and stretch or grab a drink of water, or go to the restroom, go ahead. And then we'll get started here in like two minutes. <laughs> 